Hello, this is Julie Hoag with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes. I'm excited you're joining me today. I love to share recipes with the world that work for families or groups of people that are composed of vegetarians and meat lovers. It can be a challenge to feed a split table, but I've done it for many, many years, and I've learned a few tricks of the trade that I love to share. I have my cookbook right in front of me, One Dish, Two Diets, Recipes for the Hybrid Vegetarian and Meat-Eating Family, and I am going to talk about my chili recipe in this cookbook because my family has a tradition of having chili every Halloween, and I'm recording this on Halloween I have to say that I am doing much better. I had to take a little tiny break from this because, unfortunately, COVID went through our entire family. So we were all sick for a while. We're all better now, thank goodness. But yeah, that <laughs> that ran through our house. It came from our child, which probably he got from school, I'm imagining. But we've gone this far, not having gotten COVID, but it got us this time. And he is so funny. He didn't even get that sick. Like, he didn't even say anything. <laughs> he didn't even say anything. One time he said, I kind of have a headache. And then as it went on, finally, he's like, yeah, I'm kind of stuffy nose. And then the rest of us started getting it. And we took tests. And sure enough, it was COVID. But it barely even impacted him. He even called it a minor illness. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a crazy thing we've all been dealing with. But we are now on to Halloween, and I love to make chili. My family loves chili, and we love to do it on Halloween. It's been our tradition for a very long time. And we started doing it because it was just easier taking the kids trick-or-treating if there was a meal already ready and in the crock pot. And usually my husband would take the kids out, and then I would stay home and hand out candy. And he used to decorate our trailer with lights, and he'd pull a bunch of kids around. It was super fun. Our youngest still does trick-or-treating, but he now goes with his friends. And it's a whole different thing, but our chili tradition has still stuck. And it's so fun. And chili is one of those great recipes that you can actually very easily make for two different groups of people to different diets, vegetarian and meat eating, because you can just use two crock pots. I'm going to share this recipe with you and tell you how I do that. I also want to talk about my new book that is releasing on November 12th. It is a series of cookbooks I'm starting, which are American Midwest cooking quiches. And so that one is about to release. I've already started recipes on American Midwest cooking salads. So I'm going to make a bunch of cookbooks along those lines. And that's going to be this new series of cookbooks that I'm going to be creating. And I'm really excited to share that with you. So check that out. I'll put the link down in the podcast notes so that you can access both of my books. And you can get it on the 12th, it's releasing. It's going to come out in ebook and then paperback and then potentially audiobook. I'm not sure how people feel about audiobooks for cookbooks. I did release an audiobook of One Dish, Two Diets. So if you are someone who likes to listen to things and pause it rather than looking at it or reading it, you could check that out as well. So my recipe, which is in my One Dish, Two Diets, Recipes for the hybrid vegetarian and meat-eating family is hybrid vegetarian and beef chili. Now, this is really quite easy to do. You just get two crockpots. You line them up right next to each other, and you make them at the same time. It's really quite easy. So this recipe is for both. And then I tell you in the instructions how to, how to split it so that it's the same in both, except that one has meat and one does not. It's very easy. So we just love chili at our house, especially in the fall and the winter. And my hybrid recipe just works for my family, creating chili that is vegetarian and chili that contains ground beef. As I said, I use the two crock pots and I usually use a smaller crock pot for myself for the vegetarian portion because the other four members of my family eat meat. So I generally do that because, of course, we're going to need a lot more meat chili, and my boys eat a lot. So <laughs> the big crock pot is what's needed for the meat chili. And this just helps me as the cook of the family to make a meal that works for all of us. And it ends up being less work than being a short order cook because 
I'm just basically doing them both crock pots at the same time. And then what we love to do is chop the chili with corn chips. We love the Fritos, of course, <laughs> especially the big scoop ones. Those are so good. And sometimes we'll use shredded cheese or oyster crackers, you know, side of cornbread or, you know, shredded cheddar cheese, sour cream. Those are all great ideas. From the green onions, the tops of those escallions, those are really good on top too. And my family just absolutely loves chili. And if there's any leftover, I usually freeze it, but then... <laughs> family members break into it and have the rest of it. So we don't have much in the freezer for long because it's just one of those meals that we've just really love. And I need to make it more. I tend to make it twice in October and during the winter, but I really think we need it more. <laughs> it doesn't have to be just in the fall or the winter, right? I mean, you could have it any time of year. So I do about four hours of cooking in the crock pot. I usually do it on high. And these are the ingredients. I will put this down in the podcast notes so that you can easily just copy it down if you want, or you could get my cookbook, of course. <laughs> I believe I also have this on my website, juliehoagwriter.com, which you could print off the recipe from there as well. One pound of ground beef browned, one medium onion diced, two stalks of celery diced, one green pepper diced, Two cloves garlic, finely chopped. And I often use the diced garlic where it comes already diced in the jar. But you can use fresh garlic and chop it up if you want. I have done that as well. One tablespoon butter. One small container, about three cups of sliced fresh mushrooms. Two quarts of tomato-based vegetable juice. Now, I usually use V8. You can use whatever you want, but that's the brand I tend to use. And two 14 and a half ounce cans of petite diced tomatoes, undrained. Two 16-ounce cans of dark red kidney beans, drained and rinsed. Two 16-ounce cans of red chili beans in medium chili sauce. Undrained, you want that sauce. One half teaspoon red cayenne pepper, divided. Two tablespoons chili powder, divided. One fourth teaspoon ground oregano, divided. And one teaspoon salt, divided. Okay, so this is how you do it. And... You're going to build them side by side. It's just so much easier if you do that. It just makes it less of a, like I said, less of you being a short order cook because that's what you want to get away from. When you're feeding a family that has multiple diets, the least amount of time that you could spend being a short order cook is so much better. <laughs> We're busy people, right? We need easy stuff. We need doable recipes that work for our family and our busy lives. Okay. How do you do it? Instructions. You saute the diced onion, celery, green pepper, and garlic in one tablespoon of butter in a frying pan for about seven to eight minutes until they're soft. And then you're going to add the mushrooms in saute for one to two minutes more. If you do any kind of cooking, you know mushrooms don't take long. So those usually go in last. They don't take real long to cook up. Then you're going to divide the sauteed vegetables evenly between the two crock pots. I just do this kind of by eye. I just kind of guess. I have done a little bit more in the vegetarian one of the veggies, but you wouldn't have to. But you can. You know, this is this is your meal, so you decide what you want to do. So then to each crock pot, you're going to add one quart of the vegetable juice, one can diced tomatoes, one can kidney beans, one can chili beans, one fourth teaspoon red cayenne pepper, one tablespoon chili powder, one eighth teaspoon oregano and one half teaspoon salt. So you're going to do that to each crock pot. And then to one of the crock pots, usually I use the larger one, like I said, add one pound browned ground beef for the beef chili. And you're going to cook it on high for about four hours, stirring occasionally. I have actually done this as a one and a half times recipe, which then it's like, you know, instead of one pound of ground beef, you use one and a half pounds. And that makes a good amount of chili. And I often do that when my oldest is home from college. He's in his first year in college. I will do that. And that just makes a little bit more instead of doubling it. So then, of course, I would bump up all the ingredients to one and a half times what I'm doing in the meat chili Often I will do that because he's a big eater. He's a, <laughs> he's really big into weightlifting and the protein, so he eats a lot, and he's a lot of protein, and so he likes a lot of ground beef and beans and all that kind of good stuff. So when I do this, it's just, it makes a whole house smell amazing. I mean, you know, you walk in 
a house that's cooking chili in crock pots. Oh, that smells so good, doesn't it? What a great feeling, especially when it's a little bit cool outside in the fall, which often Halloween is, which this year is not, though. I don't know where you live, but in Minnesota, it's a warm day. It's going to be great for the kids trick-or-treating. And how exciting for them to not be so cold. So they're going to have a really fun night running around. They don't have to wear as many clothes because it's going to be warmer. They won't have to stuff as many clothes under their costumes this year because it is a bit warmer. So other thing I really like to do, so, you know, everybody eats some chili and then they go about doing whatever they're going to do for Halloween. I actually really enjoy a glass of red wine with chili. It's interesting, even not having the meat, I really enjoy the flavor of rich red wine with a bowl of chili. So try that if you've never tried it. It's really good. And it's probably even better with the ground beef because everybody likes red wine with, with beef, right? And so just try that. See if you like it. It's a fun treat, and I really enjoy it on Halloween as I'm getting ready to pass out candy to be enjoying a bowl of chili and a glass of red wine, and all the lights are flickering. It's so much fun. You know, watch a movie, maybe a Halloween movie, as the kids are coming to the door. Really fun stuff, and it's just a really fun way to enjoy the holiday. And the other thing I love to do, which I made this bread yesterday, this recipe is actually in my new cookbook, The American Midwest Cooking Quiches, as a bonus recipe. It's like a appetizer recipe to the book. (laughs) Totally a different topic than quiches, but this is so good. And I made this yesterday for my family. It's so delicious. You're going to love this. I'll put the recipe for this down in the podcast notes as well. This is a bread recipe that does not take very many ingredients. It takes a lot of spices and herbs, but the main bulk of the bread is plain non-fat Greek yogurt and self-rising flour. That's it. That's literally the bulk of it. It's an amazing recipe and I've made it many times in different ways, but this is my favorite way to make it. Okay, so you're going to take one teaspoon of dried basil leaves, one teaspoon dried oregano leaves, and one teaspoon rosemary leaves, one teaspoon chopped onions. Those are like those dried ones that you buy in the spice aisle and one half teaspoon garlic salt, and one half teaspoon black pepper. And you're going to stir that all together as best you can. The salt and the pepper tend to fall to the bottom a little bit, so I try to stir it as well as I can, trying to mix those little fine grains in as much as possible. So you measure out three cups of self-rising flour and put that in a large bowl, and then two cups of plain nonfat Greek yogurt. And you're going to stir that together. Just stir, 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 stir. It's going to be kind of clumpy, and you're going to be like, how is this a dough? This is not a dough. If you've done any work with dough, you know dough is ready when it's ready, and you have to keep working it until it's ready. And when you're looking at it, it's pretty obvious when it's ready. So you just you you keep stirring it, and then you're going to knead it. So you're going to knead it with your hands. This is the best way to do this, and really the only way to do it with this bread recipe. Knead it with your hands until it becomes a dough ball. I usually put a little bit of flour on my fingers too. And you got to keep going. Even if it seems like it's sticky, it's sticking all over your hands. If you keep going, it'll start to pull the dough from your fingers. The dough ball will start to pull the dough from your fingers and it will eventually form a dough ball. Okay, once you have your dough ball, then you're going to add four teaspoons of your spices and herbs mixture. And you're going to knead that into the dough until it looks like it's pretty well mixed in there. And then you're going to place it on a baking sheet, like a cookie sheet that is lined with parchment paper. And you're going to form a loaf with your fingers and do a loaf shape about nine inches long, somewhere around there. And then you are going to take a knife and cut a shallow slice down the center of the bread. You're going to bake it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 35 to 40 minutes. It should reach the internal temperature of about 200 if you're one of those people that does that kind of testing. I usually end up being about 40 minutes when I do it with my oven. 
You're going to remove it from the oven and you're going to brush it with olive oil. I use about two teaspoons and one of those cooking brushes. It's like kind of like a rubber paint brush is kind of what it looks like. And I just paint the oil on there, the whole entire top of the loaf and the sides. And then I sprinkle. You're going to sprinkle the rest of your herb and spice mixture over across the entire top of the loaf. And you're going to try to get it all over as much as you can. And if there's a little bit left at the bottom, you don't have to use all of it. Sometimes I have a little bit of the grains left with the salt and the pepper, and I don't want it to get too salty. So sometimes I don't use that last little bit in the bowl. That's up to you. Do that for your taste. And then you slice it, and it's so good. In my cookbook, I also have the recipe for a pesto spread that tastes absolutely amazing on this bread. But it's also really good, too, with just butter or dipping it in, like, flavored oils or balsamic vinegars. There's so many good flavored ones out there. Have you tried any of those? Those are so amazing. We have a couple of stores around here, and one's in Stillwater and one's in White Bear Lake, and they are just absolutely amazing. If you've never gone to one of those stores, you should check it out. They have such great flavorings of oil and balsamic vinegar. I mean, it kind of, it's so full of flavor. It's just like bursting. So you take a yummy bread like this and you dip it in that and it's just like the best appetizer. The be- I mean, just, you don't want to stop eating it. It's so good. <laughs> and then pair it up with a glass of wine. Oh man, the best, the best. And I think this bread, I've never tried this bread with chili, but now that I have this bread, on a day I'm making chili, <laughs> I'm going to try it with it. It sounds so yummy. This bread is delicious. It really is. I make it quite frequently because it's really pretty easy to make, you know? And I love how it uses the non-fat Greek yogurt as an ingredient and self-rising flour so you don't have to add anything else to it. It's pretty epic. It's it's a great recipe and it's so versatile. I mean, you really, I've done things where I just add the Italian seasoning mix, which then you would use five teaspoons and you would do the same pattern but you five teaspoons of the Italian mixture of herbs. I've also done it with just rosemary and that's really good too. Oh, there's so many options you could do. You could switch out the garlic salt for seasoned salt. So many variations. It's a really good versatile bread that you could change it up and change the flavor of it just by doing that kind of stuff. Well, I hope you like that. It's so yummy. I just really enjoy cooking and trying new things, and it's just really fun. It's really delicious. I hope that you try out my chili recipe. You know, you could add different things to it, too, like different kinds of beans, like garbanzo beans. That's always good, too. Um, Oh, there's so many different things you could do. You could add carrot slices. I have added carrot a couple of times to chili, and it is good, too. My youngest does not like the mushrooms in the chili. (laughs) So we usually try to either scoop around or just I skip the mushrooms. But the rest of us like the mushrooms. Well, my oldest doesn't love them, but (laughs) they can pick around them. There aren't that many mushrooms in there when you're using one carton of mushrooms between two, two batches of chili. But you could bump up the mushrooms if you like that. So many versatile ways that you can change recipes to your taste. It's not that hard. You just have to plan it ahead of time and really think about it. I mean, really, it's not that hard. You got two crock pots, just split it. And then you, it's so easy to do it that way. And then all of a sudden you have this great meal for vegetarians and meat lovers, all with just one effort of your time. That's one thing I've learned over the years. It's really hard to be a short order cook. And and it's for myself (laughs) because I am the vegetarian of the family. But you know, time is precious. And the more I can combine my efforts to make a meal for all of us, the better, which is what spurred me on to making this cookbook in the first place, because I knew that there are other families out in the world, just like mine, where there are vegetarians and meat eaters within the same family. So that is my inspiration for doing this and now this podcast, which is super fun. I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you follow, subscribe to my podcast and give me a review if you enjoy this. That will really help me grow if you do that. Just even a simple review or even just a rating, it really will make a huge difference for me. I will put the links down in the podcast notes for my books. I'm also looking for reviewers of my new book. 
you happen to be one of those people, I would love to hear from you. You can go to my website. You can leave me a message at Julie Hogue at juliehoguewriter.com. That is my email. Julie Hogue at juliehoguewriter.com. You can email me and I would be ecstatic to send you a free copy of my book in hopes that you would give me an honest review if that's possible for you. If not, I just really would love to hear your thoughts. And as I'm going down this path of creating this series of cookbooks, it's going to be fun and I can use all of your help. It can really help me out if you just say what you like, what you didn't. Every recipe can be modified, as you know. And I hope that you really enjoy it. Check out my recipes also at juliehoguewriter.com, where I also have other family topics, family lifestyle like travel and DIY, pet stuff, kids stuff, family stuff, all that kinds of good, fun, family fun. Well, I hope that you enjoy this and I hope you come back again and listen to another episode of my show. I'm having a blast doing this already. And I hope you come back, Vegetarians and Meat Lovers, Split Table Recipes podcast, available on all podcast apps. Well, we're working on that. (laughs) It's slowly being added to multiple apps. The one I'm waiting on right now is Apple, but I've got it on Spotify and, oh, a whole bunch of them. So, If you're listening to this, obviously, you already know how that works. (laughs) Podcasts are free. And hey, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have an amazing day and enjoy your food. Love it. Share it. Have fun making it and eating it with your family or even yourself. If it's just you, hey, that's what freezers are for, right? Make it, freeze it, have it again another day. All right, you have an amazing day, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast. I'm honored and excited that you're here listening, and if you're listening this far, you are amazing. (laughs) Have a good day. Bye-bye now. 